Hi, Caitlin. Um, first question from me. Um, a, a slight kind of quirk for you in that you've started an FA Cup game, a Conti Cup game. You're going to start Champions League games all before you have your WSL debut. Um, I just wanted to get a sense from you how strange this last couple of months must have been for you to make this big move, for all of this to happen. Um, and now, of course, you've got international teammates coming over. Um, do you still feel like a new player at Arsenal? Or does it feel like you've already been here for a very long time? Yeah, as you said, it is weird playing, you know, the Cup games, the Conti Cup games, and now Champions League game and not making my you know, debut in the league, yeah, it, it's a bit weird and it's a bit odd because that's not normally the way things go. And um, obviously with the lockdown situation and all that, it is a very unique situation. But, um, you know, I've just been trying to make the most of it and um, take what's been happening as it comes. And um, I think the lockdown period, if anything, gave me the opportunity to almost integrate into the team a bit more and, you know, um, without being around the team, um, it definitely feels like I'm more involved um, in the team now than what I was before, which is strange because we weren't training or anything like that. So, um, yeah, I think despite what the situation's been, it's actually been a good outcome in the sense of feeling part of the team and moving forward. And, um, yeah, as you said, with the Champions League game, um, these are, these are games that, you know, as a club player, um, you know, that's the highest game you can almost play. And so um, for me, I'm just really looking forward to the, to the challenge and um, just experience it with the team. And uh, on that subject as well, obviously you've got uh, fellow Matildas coming over, but I also wanted to know um, how important your housemate, Leah Volti, has been for you in, in adapting in this period as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, obviously having two Aussies over to start off with is always familiar to have um, two familiar place, uh, faces around and um, just having two Aussies as well, it's just nice to not be the only one anymore. Um, but yeah, as you said with Leah, that's helped me massively um, coming to the team and I'm very fortunate and thankful, you know, during the lockdown period, obviously, she was living alone, I was living alone, and um, her having a spare room, um, you know, invited me to, to move in with her and just be able to train because you could only train with your household to have someone um, to train with. And, yeah, moving forward just to have company because that would have been a very, very long time um, to be by yourself. And, um, yeah, obviously, I got to know her and then obviously a lot of the girls um, more on a personal level through her as well. So, as I said before, that definitely helped me integrate into the team and get to know um, a lot of the players more on a personal level, which, you know, at times takes a little bit longer normally um, in, in season. And final one from me, just on the PSG game. Um, we know that Joe and Aaron in particular really like to do video analysis, really like to do their homework homework on opponents. Have you started to watch PSG yet and formulate your game plan or does that happen next week? Um, no, yeah, we, we've definitely started. Um, obviously, with them having recent game against Lyon as well, it was, it was a good game just to, to see and Obviously, the coaching staff have had a lot of time um, during lockdown to kind of prepare for for this game and, um, yeah, make us familiar with, you know, what we're going into and where we think we can, you know, exploit the game and um, where we have to be careful as well. So we've definitely been working on that and, um, yeah, it's going to put us in the best prep possible heading into the game. Thanks so much, Caitlin, and good luck next week. Thank you. Thanks, Tim. Richard, could you ask the question next, please? Yeah, thanks, Bex. Um, Caitlin, obviously it was for moments, games like this, you made the move to Arsenal. Arsenal had European success in the past. So how big is this competition? How important is it to this group this time around? Yeah, um, you know, for me personally, obviously coming into a team where they've already, you know, done the steps that needed to take to, to get to where we are. Um, it's a bit of a, a weird situation, but um, yeah, the, the teams obviously worked extremely hard to get to where we are now and um, moving forward, obviously, you know, with how the season finished last last year, um, we don't qualify for champions next year. So 
we, we do know in our minds that we have to win this thing to be able to, you know, still be in Champions League, which is, which is massive for us. And as footballers, you, you want to be playing in Champions League. So that definitely gives us something to drive towards. But, I mean, in saying that, Champions League, a big game, you don't need too much motivation to, to get up and be excited for those games. So, um, but again, on top of that, we haven't played football in such a long time that, you know, it's even more exciting to have a game because um, we haven't, you know, had a competitive game in a very long time. So it makes that even more exciting and a bit more special. Does it put more pressure on this now, as you say, that you haven't qualified for the Champions League next season uh, domestically, so this is your only avenue? Yeah, I, I guess in a way it, it, it does, but I think we're not going to focus too much on that because, you know, once you start thinking about these things, that's that's the worst thing you can do. So I think for us it's just this is the first game, go out there, do, you know, we've done all the work that we need to do now to, to get us there and now it just comes down to the day and um, as I said before, just to get out and play football is exciting and it being a Champions League game makes it, you know, even more exciting like I said before. And you've spoken about the length of time since Arsenal last played competitively and the excitement of looking forward to getting back into the throw of things. It's going to be hot at out, but will that help negate it a little bit? Or do, is there anything you can do as a group to try and pace yourselves and negate the effects of the extreme conditions? Yeah, I mean, I think obviously it's going to be extremely hot and fortunate enough um, in the UK, we've had a bit of a heat wave, you know, these these last couple of weeks, which is which has been good for us to train in um, and prepare a little bit. But um, I think what Arsenal has kind of been lacking before is the depth in the squad, in the sense of people, you know, being injured and just having unlucky uh, an unlucky run. Um, whereas Touchwood right now, um, you know, everyone's fit and healthy, and um, the depth is really strong. So. You know, I think heading into this game, that's one thing that we could hope to have. And, you know, that's that's what it is. So, as you said, um, we've not playing in a while and the length of the game, possibly going extra time penalties. I think that we're, that's where this will play a really key role um, in this game and even further into the tournament as well. So, I think that's reassuring and promising to know that, you know, everyone's there and everyone's fit and everyone's ready to go. And the last one from me, if I can, uh, Serena Vigman's obviously been announced as the New England head coach today. A lot of excitement when that announcement was made, given the success she's enjoyed with, with the Netherlands. You've got a couple of Dutch girls in, in your squad as well. What can she do for the sport in this country? Um, what have the girls told you about it? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm not exactly sure, I guess, um, you know, for England's sake, I hope so. But being an Australian, um, you know, maybe potentially playing against them. Um, yeah, I, I hope not. <laughs> um, but no, it's it's exciting for women's football and to, you know, just see, you know, female coaches and, you know, quality coaches. Obviously, what she's done with the Netherlands has has been massive and um, now coming into the English role as well. I think, you know, it will help them. But as I said before, selfishly, hopefully not. Brilliant. Thanks, Caitlin. <laughs> Thank Thanks, Richard. Ken, are you next? Yes. Hi, Caitlin. How are you? I'm good. Thank you. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Um, and so PSG, as you know, has had a couple of very competitive games in the French Cup. Um, what uh, what concerns do you have about uh, about your side being a little bit rusty because of the, the long layoff, especially considering uh, they've had a couple of tough matches recently, including uh, one against Lyon? Yeah, um, we obviously have, have seen them. And you know, over the years, we've also been a young, quick, powerful team. Um, and obviously, yeah, that's something that we've been aware of. And as you said, um, watching them against Leon, you, you've seen the, that um, effect they have against teams as well. So I think for us, you know, that's something we have to be aware of. But at the same time, we just want to focus on ourselves and our style of football. And, um, yeah, obviously on, on the day, it's going to be whatever team 
test team and um, yeah, it's a challenge we're excited for. Is there a particular focus or a player or two that you feel like you have to shut down in order to be su successful? Um, no, to be honest, we haven't focused um, too much of that. I think as a whole, you know, they have a lot of good players, but, you know, when you start focusing on players, I think that's where you kind of lose what, what you have. Um, and, you know, as I said, we want to focus on us and our playing style and, um, you know, they have some quality players, but obviously we have a lot as well. So, um, yeah, I think it's going to be a good competitive game and, um, uh, yeah, just as I said, just keep saying I'm excited to, to be there and to, you know, be involved. Very good. And just finally, um, more Aussies are, are coming over. Do you, do you expect to see more? And, and what do you think, uh, what's the attraction to the WSL for uh, Australians? Yeah, there's a lot of us over here. I don't know if there's too many more to, to be able to come. Um, if they're not here in the UK, um, they're here in Europe, so it's, um, I think it's I think it's good, and it's just kind of been we've all kind of been on a similar path into you know our football career and what we've been doing. And um, for the last few years, we've been doing seasons back to back with Australia and America, and I think it's just come around the same time that for all of us, it's time for a change. And you know, with European football with the level it's at and the the English league obviously making massive strides as well. I think that was very attractive to us and, um, you know, it was everyone made this move individually, but it's all just happened at the same time. And I think that just comes to where we're at in our careers and to play for one club and be in one place. Um, we've never had that before. And as I said, it, it was a matter of time before I was going to come in. I just didn't know when it felt right and um, she felt like the right move and um, it, being here now, it definitely feels more so. Um, and to have Steph and Lids around as well, familiar face. And these are two players I've never played with that club before. So only ever on um, national team. So I'm excited to, to have them in a club environment as well. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. So next up is Amy, please. Hi, Caitlin. Um, I just wanted to ask, obviously, for you in Australia growing up, the Champions League is not so friendly for you time-wise. Um, what kind of memories do you have of the Champions League growing up and what does the Champions League mean to you as, as somebody who perhaps hasn't had as much access to it over the years as some of the players here now? Yeah, uh, honestly, I, I didn't grow up with football in the family um, or watching football. I just enjoyed playing it because I love doing sports and anything. So that's how I got into football. So for me, for a very long time, I, I didn't even watch it. I just played it. So I, I'm not too familiar with the Champions League, but obviously now as I'm older, um, you know, and more involved in football and actually enjoy watching it, um, yeah, I obviously am now watching the men's football in Champions League, but I actually, before before now, I hadn't even watched the women's games because, as you said, like with the time difference and all that, it's never been um, something, you know, at 3 a.m. That, that I've done. Or, you know, I normally enjoy watching people or friends that I have um, playing. And, you know, at that time, I wasn't familiar with European um, players too much, so... Um, yeah, there's not too much background for me with the Champions League, to be honest. Do you think maybe then that you have the um, the advantage in a way of not having too much pressure on your shoulders, not knowing the weight of the competition maybe as much as some people? Yeah, I guess in a way um, it's kind of that, you know, being naive and um, not really too sure. And I think, you know, for me... Um, the pr the pressure games, this is definitely one of them, but I, as you said, I haven't really experienced it or ha know the like massive hype in a way behind it. Um, in my head, obviously, I know it's a big game, but it's different when, you know, you've been watching that and growing up watching that. Um, it definitely plays a, a different role, for sure. 
And you just said that, you know, you've not played with um, with Lydia or, or Steph before at club level. What kind of difference are you noticing um, in training with them and, and playing with them every day compared to playing with them at international level? Yeah, I think, you know, in a way uh, I've, I've been playing with Steph um, since under 17. So, you know, for 10, for 10 years. So we've known each other a very long time. Um, but yeah, I guess to to have in a club environment, you see them day in day out, um, and just I think for me, you know, I've I know them pretty good as footballers, but now it's just to to get to know them as well as as people, and that's something I haven't really had the the chance to do, and um, yeah, it's it's just good to have them around, and they're always two players that I hated playing against in clubs, so it's it's nice to have them finally on my team. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Amy. Glenn, if you could go next, please. Yeah, just to say that, obviously, you've been over here, so you've missed the excitement to an extent, but what's been the reaction back home to getting the World Cup for 2023? Must be yeah. great to think that you'd be able to hopefully play in it, you know, all being well, and the excitement within the country. Yeah, it's, it's, been, it's been massive, obviously, for us. It's been, you know... Uh, uh, process you know we've been involved in that um, process to try and get the bid and um, I think it's been like the last two years so we've seen um, all the people that have been involved in fighting to, to get the World Cup in Australia so it's just really rewarding and it's not as a footballer it's something you would never think will happen in your career to have a World Cup on home soil so yeah as, as you said hopefully all fit and healthy and um, it would be, you know, I don't even, I, I'd say a dream come true, but that's not something you ever dream of, you know what I mean? So I guess it exceeds that and, um, yeah, have all your family and friends and fans to be able to watch you on the world stage. That That's very unique. So, um, yeah, it will be very special for our country, but um, all our skills, hopefully that will be involved as well. And it must be quite something, given where the game has come from, to see the uh, the sails of the harbour of the City Opera House being lit up with pictures of the players and so on. Yeah, I mean, for us as players, that was so cool. You know, you never you never think that you would ever be on something like that, especially you know the the Opera House. That's that's pretty cool. So um, yeah, we all definitely enjoyed that, and um, it, it's a bit weird like not being there while it's happening, but. I think even in person for the girls that were there, it was it was really really special. And to the you 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 guys probably seen the videos when you know it got announced that we got the the bid and the scenes in the office and things like that. It was just shows how much it meant to everyone to you know have all that hard work pay off. And um, yeah, I'm I'm excited. I'm I'm excited for you know, the world to see Australia as well. It's it's a place that many nations don't get to come because we're so far away and, mm -hmm. you know, you wouldn't just come for a friendly all the way down there. So, um, no, nah, I'm, I'm really excited. Thanks. Thanks, Glenn. Um, Jen, if you can ask next, please. Hi, Caitlin. Just uh, one fairly light-hearted, nosy question from me. Um, with Danielle Carter recently leaving the club, did you at least try to argue your case or fight Beth Mead for the number nine shirt? <laughs> no, I don't, I don't think I, I had a leg to stand on there. Um, no, nah, yeah, I, I mean, I'm happy with my number. And, um, yeah, I don't, I don't think, you know, after two games I had any right to be trying to pull for a shirt, especially with players that have been here for years. So... Nah, if I, if I want anyone to have it, it's Beth, so I'm happy for her. But you've worn the number nine for a long time. Uh, yeah, I, I have, I have, but yeah, I've never been that personal player to think that I can come in and demand things. So, nah, I, I'll enjoy seeing it on Beth and then maybe, maybe she'll share it with me one day. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I haven't got any more raised hands, so Art is raising an actual hand. <laughs> go on, Art, you go next. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, uh, thanks. Um, so obviously uh, you haven't played too much with uh, your current teammates, but uh, with the friendlies, how 
beneficial has that been for you kind of getting used to the fluid patterns of play that Joe likes to play with so much? Yes, it's been massive, I think, you know, for myself, but also all the the new players as well. Um, There's quite a few of us. So, yes, it's been good to get some minutes under our belt, but as well as what you're saying, the philosophy and style that, you know, we play at Arsenal. So to become more familiar with that and, you know, get a bit more of an understanding of, of your teammates and obviously for them to have a chance to kind of understand you as a player, which does take time. And obviously we, we're limited with time and um, with a lot of new players that, you know, does take time, but um, it is what it is. And I guess it's been good to, to get minutes and to have sessions and, you know, a good, a good build up to get a little bit more familiar, but um, yeah, I guess obviously in a, in an important game and pressure game, that's where these, these things, um, show so it'll be interesting to see you know how the team gels and how the game pans out yeah and obviously uh, yourself and quite a few of the other uh, teammates you have um, would have had experience in pressure games in international tournaments that are knockouts like the world cup for instance how uh, beneficial is that experience going into quite a unique champions league setup like this one yeah, I think that is massive, especially with, um, like you said, with the current situation. And, you know, normally you have these games to prepare or, you know, normally the, the home and away series as well. So it's it's not really done in one game. So I think, you know, it's more even more important to have, you know, the experience. And like you said, um, with the players in the team, I think almost nearly everyone has had to play in a big match or... Um, yeah, so I guess you can say big big players, um, which will definitely come into to play in this game, and I think that will be important for us. Yeah, and just the last one. In terms of preparing for a one-off game rather than a game that has two legs, is there anything uh, specifically different about that, or is it just what kind of happens on the day? Um, I mean, I can only speak personally, and I've never – experience the home and away series um, type of layout. So for me, this this feels normal to just have the one game, but I'm sure for a lot of the girls that have been involved and have a lot of experience in Champions League, it might be a bit different for them. But um, again, on that, they've all played in World Cups and that's how the, the tournaments um, format and the Olympic Games. So, yeah, I think... Um, in a way, it might be strange, but also it's something we're all very familiar with. No problem. Thank you. Thanks.